This demo covers some of the work completed by the Stanford uh, Spotlight Exhibits team during our first two weekly sprints of a month-long work cycle in July 2016. Uh, the team has been hard at work on several large and complex issues that we hope to be able to demonstrate over the next several weeks, but we've also completed work on several smaller issues and bug fixes that I'll cover today. Uh, I'm going to demo using our staging server, and at the time of this recording, these updates have not been pushed to our production server, so they're not yet available for our production exhibits, uh, but we expect they will be soon. So first, I'm going to show an enhancement that our Stanford curators have specifically uh, asked for, and this has to do with browse categories. So uh, many of our sole exhibits uh, use browse categories, which are uh, safe searches that the exhibit curator can create and uh, use to provide exhibit visitors with an easy way to explore specific subsets or uh, areas of the exhibit collection. One request we've heard from our curators is the ability to set a specific view or set of views um, for the browse results uh, pages. Uh, that is, our Current behavior is that when a user clicks on a browse category, the results would show in whatever view that user last used for either search or browse results. But because the browse results are uh, a more curated type of results page, uh, we've heard that curators sometimes want the browse results, the browse results to always display in a particular view. And so we now support this. For example, uh, here is uh, my test collection with uh, three uh, result view pages, um, types of pages uh, that are, I've made available uh, when uh, doing a search on the site. A user can switch between these views and uh, they'll see the results on the different uh, view layouts. And whatever the, is the last view that that user has uh, selected will be the view they see when they next do a search or uh, click on a browse category. What's new is that the user can now uh, select for a given browse category the default view uh, that they would like users to see when they click on the browse uh, category. And so for here, for example, um, even though the last view I, I uh, clicked on was the list view for my search results, uh, for portraits, um, when I go to that particular browse category, I'm going to see the results in the gallery view. And this is done on an individual browse category basis. So for a different browse category, I could choose to have the, the um, masonry view um, or, for example, a list view. So this is a nice, uh, nice feature just to give curators a little more uh, control over their browse categories. Uh, while we're looking at the browse categories, I'll point out one of the bugs we've recently fixed. Um, this has to do with embedding browse category in a home feature or about page. By default, we show the number of items associated with each browse category, but we've also had an option uh, that allowed the curator to uh, not show that item count and just show the browse category title. Uh, unfortunately, we had a bug where uh, even if they uncheck this, uh, it would still show the item counts, but we fixed that now. And so when you uncheck show item counts and you save the page, uh, the item counts uh, will, in fact, uh, be omitted from the display. At Stanford, we've recently put into place a service team and associated mailing list for the Spotlight exhibits that are hosted by Stanford University Libraries. And as part of that effort, we've made the exhibit service mailing list the default email contact for um, each exhibit. So what this means is that um, when a curator is uh, configuring their contact emails, even if they don't include an actual uh, contact email address, we'll still show the feedback link and allow uh, exhibit visitors to submit feedback um, because we have a default email address that they'll go to, which is the, uh, the service uh, mailing list. And if a, if a curator does add one or more contact email addresses, they'll also be CC'd on that um, uh, feedback submission. Uh, we fixed a display bug that only affected the Safari browser, uh, but was kind of an annoying bug where uh, in the item row widget where you can have one or more uh, 
uh, items that would display uh, next to some optional text. Uh, in Safari, as you can see here, the, uh, the items would uh, be displayed in a horizontal row no matter how many items you had, and they, they wouldn't wrap, and um, so you'd have this horizontal scrolling going on. Uh, so we fixed that bug, and now when you have items in an item row widget, if you have more than a couple, they'll, they'll wrap as uh, intended. The team is uh, doing a lot of work at the moment on improving our indexing process, including trying to make adding items to exhibits a better experience for our curators. Uh, one simple ex uh, example of this is we now index collection title. Uh, so for um, items that uh, belong to, uh, so for the items, we'll now show the collection that they are associated with in their uh, metadata. And we also allow the curator to uh, include the collection uh, fa title in a facet, as I'm showing here. And so this is going to be particularly helpful for uh, our exhibits such as Fitch, where the browse categories are organized around individual collections or collection druids um, because the, uh, the curator can now create a new um, a new uh, browse category simply by clicking on one of the collection titles and saving that search as a, as a browse category. So that's a nice improvement. Uh, several of our uh, curators have noticed that our, uh, for a time, our analytics uh, summary uh, of the Google Analytics for the, the exhibit uh, where it was not showing, but we've fixed that. So um, exhibits now do show the Google Analytics summary. And finally, we've made a couple of little fixes to the invitation email uh, that is automatically sent to someone who is added as an exhibit administrator or curator. Uh, we discovered um, over the past few months that some recipients of this email, uh, and this is the email as it was sent previously, um, would fail to notice that they had to click on this accept invitation link to confirm uh, their invitation because they, they get distracted by this link here that came first that they could click on. And so uh, we've removed the link to the, to the exhibit um, URL um, from the, the opening paragraph uh, to make it more likely that they'll see the and click on the accept invitation uh, link to confirm their, their invitation. And then we've also made a uh, sole specific customization to this email and add this last paragraph uh, where we have a link for the uh, invitation recipient to um, send um, an email to the exhibit's feedback mailing list if they had a question about the invitation or about the exhibit. And then if the, the recipient um, has, isn't familiar with the, the Soul Exhibits yet, um, we have a link here to the, the landing page for the Soul Exhibits so they can um, see what they're all about. Um, we've also made a handful of other bug fixes and um, other, uh, other things that don't uh, lend themselves to demoing very well. Um, but um, these are really important for our continued evolution of Spotlight and Soul Exhibits. And, um, You'll, you'll see some of those uh, surfaced in the future. So that's it for this week's demo. Um, we hope to have two or three more demos uh, before we finish this current work cycle. So stay tuned for more.